scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It's important that we understand this so you can have several believers lined up together and their lives will command a variety of results and these results are all predicated upon who encounters God and to what degree so the quality of your Christian experience and your faith works depends on your experience with God hallelujah the Bible says in Daniel chapter 11 a very popular scripture and verse 32 the B part Daniel 11 and verse 32 it says i read the whole scripture and such as do wickedly against the covenant it says shall he corrupt by flatteries but the people that do know their god the bible says two things will happen to them not that the people who are aware there is god it takes more than an awareness as to the fact that there is god it takes more than an awareness that he is alive in fact the Bible says the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Capacity. Number two, they shall do exploits. Not talk about exploits, not wish for exploits. Their lives will become a literal capture, a manifestation of the hand of God. May that be your testimony after tonight. That men and women will look at your life and say, I used to know you, but something has changed. What changed? And you will tell them that I came for this convention and I encountered the God of the Bible. Hallelujah. That means that my results and your results will be predicated upon our encounters, our experience with God. The second thing I want you to know very quickly is that in as much as God wants to give us encounters, God reveals himself dimensionally. Please write that down. God reveals himself dimensionally. I was blessed by the pastor who came to take the offering and he said that there are many dimensions to God. That is very true. So in learning God, in knowing God, it is a, you are exploring him one dimension connecting to another. God is multidimensional. He is so vast, it will take eternity to learn all of him. But that in knowing God and in experiencing him, nobody, no matter how yielded, can see all of God in one moment. Number one, you will not even live after that encounter. Number two, even if you were given the opportunity, you will not understand what you saw. Hallelujah. So when he came to Moses, he said, I am that I am. Moses said, you are sending me to Pharaoh. But at my confidence will be predicated upon my encounter with you. Who shall I tell Pharaoh had sent me? And he said, I am that I am. That is a very mysterious name. Hallelujah. I am that I am. But all through scripture, you will see God named in various forms and in various fashions. Pending on the type and the kind of revelation of himself, he made known at that point for instance if they saw him as a mighty provider they captured that name as Jaira. are we together now 
and if they saw him as a healing God, they would call him Rapha. If they saw him as their peace, they would call him Shalom. Seeking with their righteousness. Same God, but these are several dimensions. You see, when you invoke Jairah, you will not get healing. You will get provision. So God captures his possibilities within the frame of his names. So when Jesus came and was teaching us what we have come to know as the Lord's Prayer, he says, when you pray, pray in this manner. Our Father which art in heaven, the first demand is hallowed be your name. That means reverence all those dimensions. Hallowed be your name. In other words, we must approach the revelation of your person as captured in your name with reverence. Are we together? So God reveals himself dimensionally. The God of Abraham is the God of Isaac, is the God of Jacob. But in terms of his mode of operation, the God of Abraham does not operate like the God of Isaac. The God of Isaac does not operate like the God of Jacob. Are we together? When you call upon the God of Abraham, he will reveal himself in a certain way. When you call upon the God of Isaac, he will reveal himself in a certain way. The God of Jacob, he will reveal himself in a certain way. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. God reveals himself dimensionally. And the meaning of that is that the dimension of God you encounter, if you're writing, write this down. The dimension of God you encounter will be the direction of your exploits. Let me take it again. The dimension of God you encounter will be the direction of your exploits. If you encounter a healing Jesus, what will emanate from your life is the healing anointing and a robust healing ministry. But surprisingly, you may be poor, you may be broke, even though you are operating in the healing dimension. Because that is the dimension of God that you captured. Are we together? It is possible that you can encounter the God of Abraham and you step into a point of influence and supplies and abundance. Your life becomes a portrait of the man that the Lord had blessed. And yet, there are many other aspects of your life that may not be speaking. Because you will need to encounter God as touching those dimensions. This is a very important point for us to appreciate as we explore the theme of this conference. Now you understand when you say the amazing God. Because you are talking about the same God but that there is a dimension of him now that you choose to study. And the way God operates is that the dimension of him he wants you to experience he will put that burden in your heart so that you begin to learn and explore that dimension the bible says it is god who is at work in us both to will and to do he puts the desire in your heart and he compels you to now begin to study and to begin to learn that dimension of him so god reveals himself dimensionally God reveals himself dimensionally. And you know the dimension of God you have encountered. Is it all right if I turn around once in a while? All right, so the God that you encounter, listen please. The God that you encounter determines the direction of your exploit. How do I know the dimension of God I have encountered? By the testimonies that answer in your life. There are people who will only testify in a certain area and not a certain area. That means you have seen God revealed in a certain area, but there is need to see him revealed in another dimension that may be deficient in your life. Hallelujah. Someone may have experienced the God who shows men mercy, but you may not have experienced the God who shows men favor. It is possible that you have experienced the God who can grant you the grace to pray. But you may not have experienced the God who comes as light. You may be prayerful but bankrupt of spiritual revelation. So it is important that we capture God holistically to live a balanced and a fruitful Christian life. Are we together? This is the reason why no matter how dexterous we are in understanding God, you must understand that all that you know is simply a dimension of him. John walked with the living Christ all through his earth walk for a period of about three and a half years. But in Revelation chapter 1, when he was banished to the Isle of Patmos, 
The Bible says he was there for the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he saw the same Lord Jesus, he could not identify him again. Because this time around, it was Christ glorified. A dimension of his glory that John did not see when Christ was at work in the earth. And he began to describe what he was seeing. The beauty and the radiance that came from his face. And all of those other descriptions. And although John was already caught up in heaven, there was a voice that said, come up hither. So even in heaven, there is still room to go higher. Higher than what you have seen. Higher than what you have known. Hallelujah. Are we following so far? Now, the Lord put it in my heart to share this. The Bible says, this is the Lord's doing. Please let me have your attention now. It immediately tells you, there are things that men can do. There are things only Satan can do. There are things only God can do. Please pay attention. There are things that men can do. It is human to walk on my two feet. Am I right on that? This is not a miracle. You are watching me move around this stage. It is not a miracle. We give glory to God, but it's not a miracle. It was programmed as a possibility within the reach of men. I don't have to be born again to walk because this is a possibility within the frame of men. I can clap. I can speak. Animals, even lower animals can walk. These are possibilities that men can produce. There are other things that only Satan can do. If you see them happen in the life of a man, you know Satan has visited that man. Are we together? Now we're getting into the depth of the teaching now. So there are abilities that men have. The ability to speak. The ability to think, the ability to walk, the ability to relate, even the ability to love from a natural standpoint. These are all abilities that were given by God to all men. It is not salvation that brings you into this possibility. Once you are human, it's an advantage that came with our design. Are we together? But there are other things that only Satan can do. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Jesus is speaking and he begins his discourse by saying, The thief cometh not. The thief cometh not. That means he has no business coming into your life, your business, your ministry, except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You can verify whether it is Satan by looking for these three things. He comes to steal. That means before he comes into your life, he must verify whether there is something worth stealing, something worth killing, something worth destroying. He's attacking you is already a verification that you are great. You see that now. Because the Bible says he cometh not. That means he's not careless in attacking people. There are people he will not attack because they are not worth his effort. So the fact that he's disturbing you and your family is already a sign that there is prophecy roaming around the corridors of your destiny. The thief cometh not. Are we still together? But for to steal. No wonder from birth he's been at your case. No wonder all through school he has been at your case. He cometh not. There are things only Satan can do. Are we learning? Matthew chapter 13, please. Let's hurry up 24 to 28. Matthew 13, 24 to 28. Jesus is teaching now in his manner and he's using a parable. The Bible says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying... The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Follow carefully. Next verse. But while men slept, again, he says his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Next verse. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, there appeared tares also. What thou sow good seeds in the field? From whence had these tears? Listen to the answer of Jesus. Verifying again that there are certain things only Satan can do. He being Jesus said unto them, An enemy had done this. 
That means don't confuse it. That pain and that sickness roaming around your body. Jesus is saying you, it was not part of the seed you sowed. But you are seeing another seed that is not consistent with what you have been sowing. And he's telling you let there be no confusion. An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. There are things when you see in the life of individuals. There are things when you see in the life of families. There are things when you see in the life of ministries. There are things if you see threatening glorious destinies. As a believer with spiritual intelligence, you know immediately that this is not the Lord's doing. That means it is another person's doing. That means God is not the only person who does. Satan too does. And that there are certain signatures that when you see, you know this one is the devil's doing. So there are things that men can do. Are we still together on that? There are things that only Satan can do. But hallelujah for the context of our discussion tonight. There are things that only God can do. Mm. There are certain things... There are certain results. There are certain manifestations that is higher than the frame of men. The moment you see a human vessel commanding that result, it immediately implicates him that you have come into partnership with a spirit. Our assignment is to verify which spirit, but for sure you are not alone in producing this result. For instance, if in one year God opens a door that takes 10 years, it immediately a door that should take 10 years is open for you in one year. That immediately tells you a spirit must have come to assist you for that possibility to happen. Are we together now? John chapter 3, please, from verse 1 and 2. John 3, 1 and 2. John chapter 3, from verse 1 and 2. There was a man, the Bible calls him a Pharisee called Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews verse 2 the Bible says the same man came to Jesus by night having observed Jesus for a while having observed the mighty miracles having heard whether by rumor or he verified intelligently that this was the son of a young virgin in other words he was human but Nicodemus began to follow from one crusade after another one meeting after another and he came to the conclusion that this man cannot be alone there, there has to be a God factor in them I may not know who that God is but I know that certainly this man is not alone and here's what he had to say verse 2 the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him rabbi meaning teacher we know that thou art a teacher come from god for no man can do these miracles that thou doest for no man can build this house within a short space of time for no man can raise this kind of children for no man can have this kind of influence for no man can be given this kind of power except god be with him except God be with him Nicodemus was an intelligent man you must understand and he's speaking from from his conclusion about Jesus that we have observed you and the only I can only trace your results to the fact that there has to be a partnership between you and God you and a divine spirit there are things only God can do there are things only God can do you're not a man no you're not a man no. you're the God who opens doors no man can shut you're not a man no. you're not a man the meaning of all what I'm saying is that from tonight in the name of Jesus stand in the name that is above all names your life will become a Bible study manual that men will use your testimony they will use your life to learn God in the name of Jesus the son of the living God that at your appearance men will marvel and wonder 
and find a cause to go back and study scripture because of the kinds of results that will emanate from your life you believe that shout a loud amen. amen please be seated let me give you four examples as captured in scripture of what God can do are you ready number one very quickly Deuteronomy chapter 26 do you love scripture six to nine media please help us deuteronomy 26 six to nine this was a very profound testimony and the egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage the next verse please and when we cried unto the lord god of our fathers the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. Next verse. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt, help me, with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and wonders. This is one of the things only God can do. Number two. Daniel chapter 3 from verse 24, we're reading down to 30 very quickly. The Bible talks about three Hebrew boys called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And on account of their faith, their conviction, and their refusal to bow to this 90 feet golden stature of Nebuchadnezzar that was built to mock the God of the, of, of the, of, um, the God who sits in the heavens. He created something to be God for himself. And he said at the sound of musical instruments you all bow. And the gentleman said listen we have been taught to be respectful and to be honoring but in this matter we are not careful to answer you. In other words our allegiance will remain unwavering even in the midst of this. The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. He rose up when they threw them into the fire. They made it seven times hotter. Are we together? such that those who threw them even died by the heat from the flames and these three young men jumped into the fire please follow very carefully Nebuchadnezzar was astonished he rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire and they answered and said unto the king true O king next verse and he answered and said lo i see four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of god next verse nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said unto shadrach meshach and abednego ye servants of the most high he says come forth and they came forth hither in the, in the midst of the fire. The next verse. And the princes, the governors, the captains, the kings, the counselors being gathered together. I like this scripture. They saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Upon whose bodies. This is not what a man can do. Mm -mm. The fire had no power nor was an hair of their hair singed neither was their coat changed nor the smell of the fire had passed upon them next verse please watch this as a result of that the very next verse please nebuchadnezzar spake and said blessed be the god he became a preacher at once no rehearsal no bible school but he saw a manifestation of god in the life of three young men and that man was forced to preach a sermon hmm. blessed be the god of shadrach i don't know his name but i know those who serve him shadrach meshach and abednego who had delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god last verse please it says therefore as a result of this wonder this encounter with the god who has done this one i make a decree that every people nation language which speak anything amiss against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is none other god that can deliver listen after this sort 
There are others that can try to deliver in a certain way, but God brands his impact in a way that only him can do it. Are we together? Can I give you one more? Matthew chapter 9, please, very quickly. We are examining what God alone can do. If it is true that it is the Lord's doing, then we need to know how the Lord's doing looks like. Because we know how man's doing looks like. We know how Satan's doing looks like. So I'm giving you a picture from scripture as to how the Lord's doing looks like. So that any doing in your life that does not look like what I'm describing, it becomes your assignment in prayer tonight. That means we are tracing who is behind the things happening in your life. If we see testimonies and a manifestation of the glory of God, congratulations, it truly is the Lord. But if we see pain and tears and sorrow, then we have come tonight by the Spirit to end an invisible hand that is masquerading as an angel of light. And yet the results that are showing is not the Lord's doing. Matthew chapter 9. From verse 1, please. He entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought unto him a man sick of palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Wherefore think ye evil in your heart? He says, For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said unto the man who is sick of palsy, Arise, take up your bed, and go to thine house. And the Bible says, He arose and departed to his house. Only God can do this one. Only God can do this one. If you care to add one more for the sake of reference, go to John chapter 5. The Bible tells us that there was a man who was at a pool called Bethesda. And I'm sure the first year they moved that man, he knew that no matter what, after two, three years, I should be out of here. But two years became ten years. Can I tell you, time does not on its own change anything. It is time plus an encounter with the God of the Bible that produces results. Waiting for things to change just with the passage of time will only leave you in disappointment. I'm sure when that guy was 10 years there at the pool, he said, let me give five more years at the most. But that man's life was moving from worse, bad to worse, bad to worse until he got to the 38th year. It's one of the longest known period we know in scripture recorded where a man was afflicted. Even Abraham did not stay 38 years. Even Job, the exact time was not given. But we know the Bible does not record that he stayed that long. Every long-standing issue that has mocked God in someone's life, in the name that is above all names, I stand in partnership with the grace that is upon this house. And I declare this night, may this be your night of deliverance. May this be your night of encounter in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Jesus looks at that man and knowing that he had been there a long time, quoting for sake of time, he looks at him and says, would you want that I lift you? And the man paraphrasing, he said, would thou be made whole? And the man said, I have no man. He thought that it was just men that make it happen. I have no man. I have seen men help men. But this is my situation. I don't know if God can help, but I have no man. And Jesus looks at him. He says that when I'm about to step there, another person steps before me. And Jesus looks at him and says, rise up. You have seen what men can do. They have to wait for one year until the water is stirred. But when God comes, whether it's the season or not, his appearance makes it the season. Did you hear what I said? They had to wait for one man. 
that means if if we are to walk by what scripture gave us there were only 38 people from the time of this man's affliction who had been healed out of the many people who were sick but Jesus came and said no I don't wait for seasons my when I show up it is your season it is the Lord's doing hmm. Is someone getting blessed already? Yes, now, very quickly, as we prepare to tie up our teaching for tonight, I want to give you four scriptural tests. You will always know it is the Lord's doing when the following occur. Are you ready? Number one, it is always the Lord's doing if and when the results are according to the word of God and consistent with the will of God. Please write it down. You will always know it is the Lord's doing when the results are according to the word of God and consistent with the will of God. Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1 is a very instructive scripture. God does not just do what we want. God does not just do what we cry for. In the economy of God, he only does what he says. Can we read together if you can see it projected? Ready? One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. One more time. And the Lord visited Sarah. Verse 1. As he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah. That means the only way to get God to do is to get him to say if he has not said it, even though he has the power to do it, he is bound by his word. Are we together? If it is the Lord's doing, it will have to start by the Lord's saying. The Lord's doing only follows the Lord's saying. If you are not ready to obey and to understand the Lord's saying, you will never see the Lord's doing. If it is the Lord's doing... It must be consistent with the will of God and it must be according to the word of God. Luke 5, 5. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 5 and verse 5 that Simon now answering him said, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. He says, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. All I need you to do is to speak because action follows your word every time you speak the first thing god did in genesis chapter one is that and god said let there be light and the bible says and there was light and god said let there be light and there was light so if it is the lord's doing let me recap one last time it must be according or in accordance to the word of god and it must be consistent with the will of God. That means for you to know the Lord's doing, you must know what God has said. The responsibility is now upon you to study the speakings of God as captured in scripture. When you know what God has said, you also know what he can do. Let me remind you of a few things that God has said concerning you as captured in scripture. That when men say there is a casting down, is that in your Bible? That for you, you will say there is a lifting up. If God has said that by his spirit, it means it is within his power to make it happen. Can I tell you another thing God has said? He says, and I will restore unto you. So stop crying about what you lost. God has already spoken that restoration is a possibility in his dealing with men. You lost money, you lost friends, you lost strategic relationships. God is able to restore both things and time. No man can restore time. Only God who does not dwell in the realm of time can restore time. Hallelujah. It is your responsibility to study the things that God has said. What has God said concerning you? Everything he said to Abraham, he said to you too. 
Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God the Bible says to do and to observe all that I command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you and he begins to list them Galatians 3 and verse 29 says and if ye be Christ's then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means everything he said to Abraham in Christ he has said to you. Hallelujah. That means you are called to a life of influence and grace and glory. He says you will be exalted above all the nations of the earth. Regardless the village where you were born. You see, if you can believe what God has said, then he will make what he has said come to pass in your life. You want to test the Lord's doing? It must be according to his word and it must be consistent with his will. One time a man was sick and he, he, his son was sick and he came to Jesus and he said, if you are willing, I know you are able to heal my son. And Jesus said, I am willing. That means this is consistent with my will. So watch a miracle happen because it is consistent with my will. Number two, very quickly. When it is the Lord's doing, what is the second test? The Lord's doing will always require faith on the part of the believer for its manifestation. Please write it down in your heart and on your notebook that the word, the Lord's doing will always require faith on the part of the believer. Faith in one word is obedience. Please write it down. No matter what you do that you call faith, if it does not culminate into obedience, you are not walking by faith. Faith is not just saying what God has said. Faith is walking in keeping with the conditions that commit God to perform. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 11, please. 1 and 2. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for he calls it the evidence of things not seen i like verse 2 it says for by it the elders obtained so men obtain in this kingdom by faith the elders obtained a good report and if you care to read verse 3 it says through faith we understand we were not there but through faith, 11 and verse 3, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. If the word of God framed the world, it can frame anything in your life. John chapter 1 and verse 3 says, without him was not anything made that was made. Outside of his influence was not anything made that was made. So if it is the Lord's doing, ladies and gentlemen, please understand that it must require faith. What is faith? Faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take in response. Listen, faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take as proof that you believe God and so to commit him to perform. When God speaks, and you find out the conditions that are connected to the manifestation of that promise. Walking in keeping with those conditions is called faith. Faith is beyond just confessing what God has said. It is part of the process of faith. But there has to be the action of obedience that commits God. Are we together? It must require faith. The Bible mandates that we only follow those who through faith and patience. There are many routes to obtaining the promises, but that in following men, verify that there is faith at work in their lives. Otherwise, you are taking a risk to follow men who through faith and patience. Can I tell you, when you are walking with God, there must be something captured within your walk with God that will demand that you trust him. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him 
that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.